People, how's it going? Today we're going to be fixing another broken MacBook. This is a MacBook that's decided to go its own way, the liquid damage way, straight to my office. But we're going to get this thing fixed up so that it starts going the proper way again and works. It's going to go over to the desk camera over here, uh, zoom in a little bit so it doesn't show you my crotch, and we'll show you something even better than my crotch, a ThinkPad keyboard. Now this is a keyboard for my friends. This, oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. That is awesome. This allows me to scroll. This MacBook has no light on the charger. What could keep a MacBook from having a light in the charger? The one wire circuit is powered by PP3V42. That's what allows the charger to speak to the system management controller. Now the first thing that we're going to do is ensure that we have our PP3V42 by checking with our multimeter on the PP3V42 line. We get 3.4 volts. So that means that the power supply required for that to turn on works. We're going to go and check over a little bit on our DC inboard connector because this is going to be where the charger talks to the SMC and also where the 3.42 volts is going to go over to the DC inboard and that looks just fine. We're going to look at our DC inboard cable, and that also looks just fine. And this looks fine as well. In our DC inboard, where our one-wire circuit is, this is what powers the one-wire circuit chip here, and this chip is what's going to allow the charger to talk to the SMC. One of these is going to be charger, the other SMC looks just fine. All this looks just fine. So the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to assume that the pathways there and power lines are good. What we need to do is figure out if the SMC is actually turning on. So we're going to plug this back in. What we have to do here is see if the SMC is turning on. So let's go over here to the schematic in the board view and figure out why the SMC is not turning on. Now there's a chip that's going to tell the SMC to turn on or to tell it to not turn off more accurately, and that is U5110. U5110 is going to pull a reset signal to ground which will tell it to not turn on. And here we have SMC reset underscore L. And let's check out the U5110 area and see what that looks like. So we look at SMC reset L over there, and that's something that I would hope to be at 3.42 volts. Turn the meter right back on, measure what we get at SMC reset, and is oh, wow, 0 0.003 volts. Hmm, that's interesting. Why do we have 0 0.03 volts? Well, SMC reset L is supposed to be pulled up to 3.3 volts, or 3.42 volts, by... R5100. You can see here. R5100 sits between SMC reset L and PP3V4 2 underscore G3 hot. So let's see what R5100 looks like now, shall we? Because that's going to be pulling up our signal. We turn the board around. We locate it. We're going to find this little thought of a resistor and see what's wrong. And as you can see, the little thought of a resistor had something spooge all over it. You little thought. My God, who have you let cream on you? Look at all the cream on the side of that resistor. Jesus Christ. And it just comes right off the board. Damn. Be gone, thought. Resistor is gone. So now it looks like we're going to have to fix some pads here. So the pull-up resistor was causing our problems all along. That's no good. We are going to fix that with our little X-Acto knife. So we're just going to scrape away that corrosion on each side. And once the corrosion is scraped away, then we have something that we can at least solder to. So first thing to do is scrape away the corrosion with the X-Acto knife. The second thing I'm going to do is take some alcohol and a Q-tip and wipe off all the stuff that I, that I got on the board as I was using the knife because it's going to leave little bits of residues and little pieces of dust. Kind of like the wall of the Shaw in the Shawshank Redemption. Next thing we're going to do is turn on our fume extractor because we're going to begin soldering. We're going to take this little fume extractor 
Put it right in front of there. Add a little bit of NC559 V2TF Flux available from store.rossmgroup.com where you get everyday low prices on all your micro soldering needs. Don't delay. Buy today. I'm going to take a little bit of solder over here. I'm going to put a little bit of solder on each pad there and just a little bit of scraping for new tweezers. Thank you, my friend. All right. And now we have some nice new solder pads for a nice new resistor. Just like that. Some nice new solder pads for a pretty new resistor. And that little resistor next to it looks like he used a little bit of TLC, so we're going to give it a little TLC. I'm using the wrong tip. I am using a BCM2, but hopefully this encourages you to solder. Even if you don't have the tip, that would be perfect for your needs. Don't let the fact that you don't have the tip that you need stop you from achieving your goals. I haven't had the tip that I would have preferred for the past 13 years. And I still try. So... Here we go. Look at this design. This tip is not the finest tip for this job because, you know, like this tip covers four. I could solder four of these resistors all at once with their pads, but I'm using the edge of it. And using the edge of the tip is what matters. Technique, my friends. Technique. Right. Now we're going to get another one of those resistors from another board. We're going to solder it onto this board. And then hopefully this board will start to learn how to behave. We've got a nice new resistor. Put on there. We're going to see how this board functions and see if we get a fan spin. I'm fairly certain that we'll get a fan spin. I have lots of confidence in fan spin. Ahem. Ahem. Little bastard, trying to make me look bad. There we go. Fan spin. Orange light in the charger. And this board just works. That's how you dethought a MacBook board. And as always, I hope you learned something. With that, we move on to the next motherboard. SMC Reset L. It's all it took. And you saw how small that was. It was this little speck. That speck of corrosion was barely the size of my tweezers. But that's all it took to kill a MacBook. Just a little drop. Like, this was it. This was it! Imagine. Just imagine if they covered their boards with the tape that, uh, that Lenovo and IBM have been using to cover their ThinkPad boards for the past 10 to 12 years. But that's all it would take. Just a dollar, a dollar's worth of tape that goes over the board so that when the liquid gets in the machine, it just goes to the sides and away from the circuit. It's just, like, it's probably less than a dollar's worth of tape. It's, it's, it's nothing. It's all it would take. And they don't want to spend that on you. The world's most valued company on planet Earth. That's all it took to kill their products. And you're probably still going to buy them, too. All right, so this is another MacBook. And this has one of the most knockoff batteries I've ever seen in my life. Like, l look at how bad this knockoff is. Tell me this isn't shit. And that's not my camera not focusing. That is just ridiculously blurry print. It looks like the camera's not focusing, but it is. And it has this matte finish over. It has a, some antimicrobial finish on the battery. This is not even this is not even trying. Let's take a look over this MacBook board. All right, so this board does have some layers of nasty on it. it does look like a little bug came in here and puked on the board. I just ate too, so this is not nice. And this actually looks like flux, not corrosion over here. 
Ugh. So I'm not the first person here, it seems. Alright. Seems like some... Oh! So all that, and they missed this. Corrosion by these capacitors. By the SMC. Alright, these two capacitors have to be gone. Be gone. Junk, junk. Alright. So you've got that. It's kind of nasty. Wonder if it's going to work now. Well, I'll be. Fan spin. And light in the charger. It's another MacBook. Same spot of water. It's all it takes. Imagine. Imagine if they put tape over the motherboard. Imagine how many hundreds of thousands of millions of people would have saved untold amounts of money. Wouldn't you ima wouldn't it be great to live in a world where people like me were not necessary? It would be great to live in a world where somebody like me had no job. Unfortunately, that's not the world that we live in. Meh, maybe I could replace that stuff to be nice. And we'll ultrasonic it. Maybe I'll replace... Yeah, I'll put two caps there where they're supposed to go. Paul's watching. He's going to be mad if I don't. My job only exists because one large company acts like an asshole. Like, if Apple stopped being an asshole tomorrow, my job would be gone. I'd have to find something else to do with my life. Ah, shit, I just ate a resistor. Get. Oh, that's fine. Go away, Saddle Blop. That's going to require a little jumper wire. Be a Saddle Blop. really doesn't seem to be much space for a cap over there. I don't think I need another one. This board's probably good to go. 